How's it going everyone? Vlad here with SolusPLC.com. In today's episode, we're going to discuss a very important portion of PLC programming, which is troubleshooting. And we're going to go through a basic example of how you can capture a certain tag change. But also I want to demonstrate how you can create something a little bit more advanced than what you would typically see in manufacturing plants, which is capturing the date and time of an occurrence of an event. So beyond just incrementing a simple counter, we're also going to put a timestamp through a UDT of when that specific event has occurred. Without any further delay, let's get started. So what I have in front of you is a simulation of a line that I've been writing for a different project, but I believe it demonstrates this principle extremely well. So on the zeroth rung, what you have is a start button, a stop button, and asset number one running. And one of the things you may encounter in a real world scenario is that one of the assets is going to be started and stopped, for example, by an operator, a technical personnel, or somebody else on the plant floor. And what you're going to have to figure out is whether or not it was actually started, for example, multiple times on a night shift. So typically what happens is that People will either forget, there's no log, they're going to tell you that they started the system once, it went into, for example, a failure state, they try to restart it, they don't know how many times. So the first thing that's very natural to do if you're encountered with a situation like that, especially if you don't have somebody that's going to watch the system on a different shift than you, the natural thing to do is create a counter. So I'm going to demonstrate that right now. So I'm going to add the start button to a counter. So very simple, this is something that most of you should be able to do. So this is a counter that I'm going to create, for example, event one counter. I'm just going to change that event one counter, press enter, right click a new event one counter. That's going to be on my PLC. That's perfectly fine. Preset and accumulated should be zero. And so now what's going to happen is whenever the operator or whoever hits that start button, right? So I can right click and I can toggle or use the shortcut control T. You'll notice that the asset has been started for whatever reason, for a fault condition, it was stopped and then somebody restarted it again and maybe pressed the start button a number of times. As you can see, I'm simulating the press of a button. It has counted up to 16. Now, the issue here is that you don't really know when this was pressed, why this was pressed. You're not really capturing any additional data. So it becomes difficult for you to troubleshoot. That being said, this is the first step in troubleshooting that you should be taking. So immediately, if I come back in the morning and I see that the system should have been started only once and it was started 16 times, I can raise other questions with my personnel. That being said, in this tutorial, we're going to go a little bit more advanced. So I'm going to go all the way up to my controller. So controller PLC box, I'm going to double click this. And what I'll find in a date and time are a few configurations on the time of the PLC. And this is important because it's going to be set or the data log that we're going to create is going to be based on the timestamp of the PLC. And that's an obvious statement, but you have to think that your system cannot pull the time, for example, of your laptop. So it becomes important is to make sure that the time is accurate for you to report these events or save the data as you would expect. So you can change the date and time. You can select a different time zone as well. For me, it's going to be Eastern time for US and Canada. So we're looking at 3.21 PM as of right now. I'm going to press on OK. And the way we're going to extract that time is we're going to use a GSV function. I don't believe that we've talked about that before on this channel. So I'm going to create a new rung in my main. I'm going to put in an XIC and I'm going to change that to GSV or get system value. Now, this get system value function allows us to retrieve certain parameters from our PLC. In this case, what I'm going to type in as class name is a wall clock time. And in my attribute name, I'm going to type in date time. And you'll notice that it's going to autofill those fields for you because they are parameters that have been predefined on the PLC. Now in the destination, so this is where I'm going to get those values into, into a register of my definition. So I'm going to call that PLC T. I already have a couple of them that have been predefined. So I'm going to change a different name. 
I'm going to add this as the zeroth iteration and new PLCT. Now, this is very important because you want to capture the seven double integers that are going to come in. So it's going to be data type dint seven. I'm going to create that on the PLC side because I want to be able to access that from my other program. Click on create. And if I finalize all the changes in my program, we can go and take a quick look at PLCT. So I'm going to right click and go into monitor. And here we're going to find the seven double integers that we've just implemented. And what you'll notice or what might come to mind at first glance is that there's going to be a register which is in position five that increments every second. The next one is going to be minutes, hours, then a day, month, and then a year. So this register retrieves the value from the PLC and stores it in a double in format. So this is something that we can use in order to store the current date of the PLC. Now there's also going to be some microseconds. I don't think that register is extremely relevant if you're going to save some of these events. I don't see the need to store that, but you can certainly do so if you choose to. Now, what's also going to be making our life a lot easier is the concept of user defined data types. And because we're going to create our own user defined data type, we can treat that as a single instance. So I'm going to go into data types, user defined, right click, select new data type. And here I'm going to give this UDT time stamp. And we've talked about UDTs in a different video, but I do want to quickly go through this. So we're going to define seconds as a double integer, so dint. We also want minutes, dint, hour, dint. After hour, we have day, dint. So these are, this is going to be a register that's going to be a little bit more descriptive of the data than, uh, than what we've got previously in the array of double integers month and then year. And you can certainly choose to ignore, for example, you don't necessarily need to store the month and the, and the year. So maybe you want to make it shorter, but I don't see a, a reason why you would not store all of them. So we're going to apply, press on OK. And now we can go back to the logic that we had created or the, the line assets. And here we can try and capture that something a little bit more interesting. So I'm going to create the start push button once again, post that right there. I'm also going to do a one shot. So I don't want this to be continuously spamming my data register, but instead it's going to only happen once event, event one underscore one shot. And this is going to be a Boolean on the PLC side. That's perfectly fine. And so when this happens, I want to record all those parameters that I've created in my register into an instance for event one. And we're going to do that using move instructions, MOV. And so the source, just to remind you, once again, if we go back into our main where we implemented the GSV, that's going to be this register PLCT. And we need to put the right registers into the right values of the instance we're about to create. So here I'm going to type in PLCT and let's go look at what is six. So six is going to be the microseconds. We're not interested in that. Five is going to be the seconds, as you can see incrementing right there. And so this is event one underscore time stamp. So the timestamp for event one, and I'm going to right click this new event one timestamp. This is going to be of data type UDT underscore time stamp press on okay. And there's question marks because we need to specify what this register is going to be. And that's going to be starting off with seconds. Now we're going to do the same with minutes. Remember that this increments or decrements down for the minutes, seconds, minutes, then it's going to be hours. then days, days, months, and years, day, 
month, year. And we must specify, as I keep saying, the right registers. Otherwise, this is not going to work. So day, month. And year. We're, we're still not done with the final implementation, but let's just compute the logic and see what we're going to store. And this is pretty basic, so we're just moving registers around. So when the start button gets pressed, again, I'm just going to toggle it once. You'll notice that we've saved all the parameters inside of our timestamp. And so if I right click and go into monitor, you'll notice that we'll see that there was an occurrence of this specific event at 57 seconds, 27 minutes, 20th hour, fifth day of the 10th month and 20. Actually, it looks like we made a mistake in the year. So let's go back and fix that. I didn't change the parameter. That's why it's important to always double check your logic. So we're going to put a zero in there, which is the year register. And once again, if we toggle this bit, you'll notice that the year has been saved appropriately. Now, the problem with this implementation is that we're only saving a single timestamp and we're looking to collect data on multiple events of the occurrence of the start push button press. So the way we can do this is with a FIFO instruction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to once again edit this wrong since we already have a one shot, we can add a little bit of logic that's going to allow us to save many instances. So the instruction that I'm going to use here is going to be called FFL like that or FIFO load. And so source is going to be the timestamp that we've just created. So event one underscore timestamp. So we're going to save the timestamp and we need to save this into an array of timestamps. So event one underscore timestamps with an S, notice that this array is different and I'm going to select zero and I'm going to right click this. So this is going to be an array of the same UDT that we've just created. So time stamp and let's create a hundred of them. Again, you can make this shorter or longer depending on how many events you can anticipate and of course extend it as needed. So I'm going to create 100 of these instances on my PLC press on OK. We're also going to need a control register. So event one underscore control. And the length is going to be 100. Before we do that new event control, press on create length is going to be 100. So we want to go all the way up to 100 registers to fill this up. Position is going to be zero. Actually, I believe this needs to be 99. And one thing that we need to take care of is the unload. So once the position reaches that critical point, we need to start unloading the FIFO. And the way we do that is we can create a condition under which the position so here, what I'm going to do is event to one underscore control dot pause. So when the position reaches 99 elements, we're going to remove the last element of this list. So it's going to be FFU. And so we're going to specify a destination, essentially a unload location for the register unload and this is going to be so. So I'm just making sure that we're unloading the array onto a tag that's going to essentially just discard the value. There's absolutely no use for this unless you want to see uh, what's going to be removed from the timestamps. So timestamp, click on create. And so length here is going to be zero. The position is going to be tracked by event control. And let's compile the logic and see how this works in action. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to look at this register. So if I right click the FIFO, I go into monitor. I can notice that there's going to be multiple UDTs. If I open the first one, the second one, the third, the fourth and the fifth, you'll notice that they're all going to be zero. And that's because we haven't triggered the start push button. Going back to the logic, let's toggle it once. So I'm going to right click and toggle. You'll notice that definitely the timestamp that we've created before has changed. But if we once again 
go into our FIFO and then monitor what's going on, you'll notice that the first occurrence has been stored in register number zero. So we've got the seconds, minutes, hours, days, month, and year. If we toggle the start button once again, so right click, press toggle, the register has updated, but let's go back to the FIFO and you'll notice that the first occurrence has been shifted to register number one, while the the most recent one is going to be in register number zero. And that's going to continue to happen every single time this button will be pressed. So once again, if I toggle this button and then I look at the FIFO, you'll notice that the third element has been added and that's going to continue so on and so forth until you fill out the FIFO and at that point it's going to start shifting back into the registers. And this becomes really interesting because you can start tracking the occurrence of different events in your facility and this could be certainly extended to have additional functionality and you can start trying to present some of this data on an HMI screen. So for example, it doesn't need to start it doesn't need to track the start and the stop push buttons, but it can also start tracking, for example, a batch start that's going to enable your asset. You can also start tracking for how long an asset has been running, when it was started, when it was stopped. So you can get really creative with some logic involving the timestamps on the PLC side. In any case, that's all we have for you today, and we'll see you next time.